You know, Ilya Sutskever said data is the new oil, which is, I suppose, not a new thing to say, but it's Ilya, and he's one of the leading lights of the AI generation. And when he said it at NeurIPS in November 2024, we all paid attention. There have been two major trend lines since then that make me think that Ilya needs to update his priors. I know, who am I to say that? I'm nobody to say that. So let me just finish my thing. Uh, number one data is getting locked off actively. And this is something that's actually in favor of Ilya's contention, right? So Ilya's contention is that we're running out of data to train on because there's only so much data in the world to train on. What if we're running out faster than he thought because people are actively locking off sources of data? We see that on a few places. Uh, one, if you've been on this channel, OpenAI bought Windsurf, Anthropic cut off model access to windsurf for their clawed models because you don't want to let those guys get the models right then the model output tokens would go to their rival open ai and that would be a problem it's a data lock off and this is for future data streams this is for data that users generate in the tool what i would call user generated artificial data because it's artificial because it's coming from a model but it's user generated because you're prompting for it I think it's one of the biggest sources of renewable data that we have. ChatGPT generates a ton of user-generated artificial data. Uh, it's one of their greatest sources of data, I would hypothesize. Uh, and Anthropic did not want that valuable code data to go to OpenAI. Okay, second development in that direction. Salesforce has reportedly cut the rapidly growing uh, company Glean off from getting access to Slack messages. And why does that matter? Glean specializes in dealing with a single pane of glass that executives can see what's happening in the whole business. They need Slack to do it. And so Salesforce is cutting Glean off at the knees because Salesforce views Slack data as highly valuable in the age of AI. And I would agree, I think it is. But Salesforce is making moves they didn't make last year because they understand better at the executive level that they need to ring fence that data in order to prevent people from getting a hold of it. And again, this is not necessarily user generated artificial tokens in this case. This is just user generated data. We're typing in Slack all day. Well, now Glean can't get a hold of it. I would expect those restrictions to continue to tighten. Third one is uh, on the legal side. I talked about the New York Times suing OpenAI and kind of some of the problems with that. Disney suing Midjourney is sort of the next generation lawsuit here. They're basically saying that Midjourney uh, allo uh, allows users to create proprietary Disney characters. And without getting into the merits of the case, I think the story from the data side is essentially Disney is trying to lock off huge chunks of the data landscape to trainers and models, similar to what the New York Times is doing, chunks of the data landscape. Now, individually, these maybe huge chunks isn't fair. They're huge in terms of, you know, nominal value, gigabytes and so on, terabytes, petabyte maybe. But they're not huge on the scale of like zettabytes, not huge on the scale of the internet. So I think if you remove them, the models would go on much as before. So three different ways in which we're cutting off access to data, making data uh, effectively less common, less available, more of a resource that Ilya would say is not coming back and that we have to be careful with, right? So this is in favor of Ilya's contention. And in fact, suggests that we may be accelerating the scarcity of data. But two is a little bit different. Um, theme two, is this idea that we are taking data and we are very rapidly using machines to iterate on machine generated data. Now there was a very famous study done too long ago to matter, which means 2023 in AI terms, that suggests that synthetic data generated by AI can't be reliably used by AI. That's not true anymore. Uh, you have m reports coming out of multiple major model makers that synthetic tokens are useful in the process of training. And now we've gone the next step. 
there are reports that there are automated iterative improvements at multiple major model makers driven by autonomous AI. And so this, the, I've seen leaks from both Anthropic and from OpenAI on the internet, both suggest independently that they are working through the concept of AI driven reinforcement learning. So instead of humans saying, is this a good thing or not? And driving reinforcement learning, which trains the model what responses to prefer or not, they're getting better responses out of the model by letting AI do the reinforcement learning on AI. AI taking over the training of AI, which if you're wondering is one of the big steps toward a generalized intelligence explosion. Because if AI can do it, there's really no barrier except power, right? You just turn on more power and AI can do more of it. And so in that world, does data still matter if you can use AI to generate synthetic tokens and then use AI to reinforcement learn your way through? And the answer may be, you don't really need the data, but you do have alignment questions and that's a separate conversation. But it's one of those things where I've been watching the longer term trend line since NeurIPS, uh, which is the conference Ilya spoke at where he talked about the data piece. And I've been saying, well, how's the data story evolving in 2025? And I think the story is basically executives are waking up and shutting data off wherever they can. And at the same time, model makers are innovating and basically finding ways for it not to matter. They're finding ways for AI to drive reinforcement learning on synthetic tokens. So it's like, well, if you cut off the data, it doesn't matter. You tell me, where do you think the data story is going in the rest of 2025.